reinventing democracy. This is the goal and we will provide tools to support that. Representative democracy has been an incredible success in supporting and organizing societies freely and guarantees sustainable wealth to many. Turnouts in elections, however, are declining and in many countries people seem increasingly critical of their parliamentary and congressional systems. We have seen movements and uprisings like Occupy, Arab Spring, Spanish Revolution or the Pirate Party not only pushing against current economic conditions but questioning the very foundations of the political system's ruling. Speak with us, don't speak for us. This is the emblematic statement of autonomy of the General Assembly of Occupy. It expresses the desire by people not to be represented, not to be spoken for, but to take agency themselves. Grassroots democracy, proxy voting and other non-representative methods of political decision making offer many advantages of the rather distanced and indirect system that we call representative democracy. And code is law. This is the catchphrase of Lawrence Lessig's famous uh, book on the future of democracy. From the beginning of the Internet Revolution, there has been a discussion whether the new forms of media and communication will lead to another revolution too, the political one. Many of the media and platforms that rose over the last decade show aspects of communal or even social systems and hence might be called social media with good cause. The political movements and uprisings of the 2010s have been a laboratory for experimenting with these exciting new tools. Since these new forms of presenting, debating and voting for policies have been occurring just recently, we can expect many others uh, to appear. New concepts to translate the internet paradigm into social decision making. But how do these voting systems actually work? Are they really mapping people's will into a volonté générale, into decisions that can be kept stable, just and continuous? And how to evaluate one system against the other? It is very tempting to go for technological solutionism and at the same time overlooking the main problem here, that all political experiments like mentioned above, so far have failed. I have been researching the new forms of democracy for the last six years. I started as a political activist, but soon had to realize that it is far from trivial to balance the settings and parameters to keep these systems stable and running. So I sat down and thought through the methods to map the multitude of political systems into one abstract form to make them comparable and to play around with the different options. Together with collaborators at Potsdam Universität and the data scientists working for my own company, I developed the mathematics behind it. Based on recent research on uh, probabilistic voting theory and the logic of decision making, we sketched a framework that has now to be cast into software. The aim of the project proposed here is to finalize the framework to beta version and to find support for a real-world application. This application could be, for example, a municipality or a regional administrative body building a new political system. There are many places where this task is imminent, like regions recovering from unrest or war, where a political system has to be established while all the options are still open. I believe that only an open system, which everybody can analyze and understand, can build trust. Our work shall support democratic experiments, no matter where and under what economic conditions. So any hurdles like license fees or legal constraints that might make it less accessible will only weaken its potential. All papers and all code of the project will be published under the applicable Creative Commons license. I want to take Lessig by the word. Our goal is to use mathematical formalization to create a sandbox and a testbed for experimenting with future political systems to keep democracy working in our post-internet age.